Dear Father in heaven, we are so thankful for this Sabbath, that we can be here worshiping together, studying your word, understanding your truth. We just ask, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to be present here, that your angels can be around us. And we pray for those, our loved ones, our friends, um, who are also seeking your truth. We ask that you can be with them. Guide and direct all of us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, good morning. good morning. It's really nice to be here again. And uh, I've had a lot of time to try to think about what I was going to share with you this morning. And uh, I'm going to be sharing this afternoon, which is going to be a little more involved than what I want to do here. I want to do things a little simpler. Of course, with me, simple doesn't necessarily mean simple. But uh, I want to look at, uh, I want us to think about something. I want us to think about last October. And last October, we, uh, we had the month of October, and Elder Jeff was presenting the number eight. I don't know if you remember that, any of those who were, were following last October. And there was a number of numbers, and of course I like numbers, because numbers are something that's objective. And in, in my personal experience, you know, as I've come to know God, I've, I've recognized that we can be very subjective creatures. We can see things from our perspective. We can, we can have a story, we can tell a story, and we can, and with that story we can then frame everything around us to fit that narrative. And I'm not really a fan of stories. I'm a fan of something that's much more solid than just stories. I'm a fan of truth. I love truth. And I also want it something that I can check myself with. And of course, the standard that we use is God's Word. And God's Word is not uh, something that is subjective. It's something that, that's objective because God is the creator of this word. He is the objective observer of this universe and he's the one that is the source of all knowledge. Now we also find in Daniel 8.13 that God is a God of numbers. Now I've studied a lot of physics and mathematics and this universe is governed by numbers. God has used, He has created a universe that is full of mathematics. And to me, numbers are His fingerprint, or maybe even His footprint. In Daniel 8.13, which we're all familiar with, and the question of it, which is answered in Daniel 8.14, but it says, Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint, which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice? And so forth. Um, but that certain saint, as we know, is the Palmoni. And he's the wonderful numberer. And I'm going to show you a little bit about music first. So, when we dealt with this message last year, we had a number of things that showed up. One was November 9th. Another thing was, uh, in November, we learned about July 18th. And of course, we've been studying that. And we had noticed that this was 252 days from here to here. And Elder Jeff then did a presentation where he divided this in half with the cross and he put eight here and eight here. And whether that we understand it that way still or not, um, to me there was this significance about this number eight. But we had other numbers, and um, one of the numbers that we've, we've dealt with is the number 273. And I've tried to, you know, the title of this is 273, because that's kind of what I want to look at. Uh, but really I'm looking at a lot of numbers. And we had the numbers 391.5, we had the number 
64. So we had all these numbers last year. But they're not separate things. They're all part of a whole. They're all part of a structure. And um, I use this illustration uh, always when we were dealing with the lines, that they were like transparencies in an anatomy book where you lay down each one and it adds more detail about the, the, the anatomy, you know, the, the bones and the nerves and the vessels and the muscles. You know, and, you, and, and that's the way our message has been. But as we've been studying these lines that have been given to us, uh, the way that we've described it in our, in our study group up in Canada is that this is more like a tapestry. That there's, everything is woven in, all of these different threads and lines are being woven together to make this beautiful picture of something you know, that God wants to show us. And um, so I'm going to just deal with some of those threads here. Now, so we had all these numbers. Uh, 187 was another number, because that's the 10th day of the 7th month is the 187th day of the Jewish year. But we also know it means July 18, and in Samuel Snow's letters, and obviously here in this prediction. Um, other numbers that we had, 277, that would be a number that represents July 27th. And of course the number 8, 264, all these numbers. But these numbers are all connected. And you can't just take one of these numbers, one of these messages, because they all have a message attached to them. And you can't just take one of those, those numbers and separate it out. You have to look at them all together. But there are some numbers that tie the other numbers together in powerful ways. And, of course, they're all tied together uh, with each other. Um, now, before all this stuff happened, before September 7th happened, um, for me personally, something happened and uh, that prepared me for it. And um, for me, it was some dreams that I had. And, of course, it's not odd for me to dream about numbers and mathematics. Um, but one of the dreams was about triangles, right angle triangles, which I'd never dreamed about before, uh, oddly. Um, but also, I was, had been working with numbers, um, and I had taken the number 187. So I, I don't know if this, everybody's going to understand this, but I at least want you to understand what it means. But I took the number 187, and I put it into this uh, program that I have uh, that will give me, the, or it's a website, that gives me all the characteristics of that number, all the divisors, um, tells me whether it's a prime number, uh, those types of things. But it also tells me something else. It tells me that I can put, turn that number into different things. Now, this number, if we really wanted to represent it correctly in mathematics, you would put a little 10 down in the bottom right-hand corner. What would this little 10 mean to people? Anybody know? No? It's base 10, right? So we have 10 fingers, right? And when we count, we have these, we, we're, we're counting in base 10, and that's the way that we usually count. Of course, there's base 20, which the Babylonians used. There's also base 12, a dozen, two dozen, that's base 12. Um, but this program it, or website, it will tell me how I, what this number would be in different bases. So this might not make sense to everybody. But the thing that I noticed is that in base 8, it was the number 273. So, you know, as again, not everybody's going to understand what base 8 is. Now, one is it's a computer language. So in computer, they have a thing called octal, which is base 8, and a thing called hexadecimal, which is base 16. Um, and, of course, they use binary, too, which is just base 2, zeros and ones. So um, I'd noticed this, and this, this struck me as I started thinking about it. I thought, what, what is the odds? I mean, that's what I always think about everything. What is the odds that these two numbers would be related? Because this, to me, is what I was given last year, July 18th, 
And this is the message that Tess had given, you know, through last year and even before, dealing with Acts chapter 27 and Numbers 3, verse 46, where we have this um, number for the Levites. And so to me, this told me that this message of July 18th is a message to be given to the Levites. That's what it told me. But of course, I, I'm just starting there with that, that idea that this is important. And um, but then I thought I would try some of the other numbers. So um, I took the number 391, because 391 is the other number that we use, and mostly what people think of is the 391.5, right? So we know from October 13th, 2018, at noon, I was in Lambert Church doing this calculation and noticed it's 391.5 days to midnight commencing November 9th. But the number 391 just itself is a significant number because we know it's the number of Josiah Lich's prophecy and it's the number uh, that comes from uh, the kings of Judah. More specifically, 391.5. But I put 391 as the whole number and I did it, which is base 10, and I did it in base 16. And the number I got was 187, I believe. Yep. So that really seemed highly unlikely <laughs> that that would happen. Now, the thing is these are base 8 and base 16, which are, if we look at that diagram here, this is 8, this is 8, this is 16, right? So it's not just some arbitrary number that I chose uh, or that I noticed because I didn't really choose it, it just, I saw it. Uh, but then I thought of doubling, you know, doubling things. Uh, so I, I thought about base 16 and the number that I put in it was the number 264 because that's the other number from Josiah Litch's prophecy, the 26th day of the fourth month. So this is base 10. And the number I got in base 32 is 88. Now, it's actually unlikely that you're going to get a number in base 32 that actually has a number in it because base 32 has all these letters to represent numbers because we only have, uh, you know, 10, 10 placeholders, right? And um, so the fact that I even got like numbers that look like numbers and because normally you put a number in there and you put a base 32 and it's going to be like A, C, D, 6 or something. You know, it's going to have all these letters. So that was pretty amazing. And so this tied to me, all this get together, all of these symbols that we had last year. And they're all tied together by the number 8. So this, this to me was significant. Now I said that I had uh, had some dreams about triangles. And, you know, right triangles are, are interesting because they represent ratios. And so, most of you should know the answer to this. This side is 3, this is the right triangle, and this side is 4. And what side, what is the length of this side? 5, right? And that's because the square of the hypotenuse or the square of these two adjacent sides added together are equal to the square of the hypotenuse or the other way around. Either way, you put it. So if you take 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, 9 plus 16 is the square of 5, which is 25. And that's going to be true for any right triangle. And it's interesting that there are 16 right triangles that have that you can use whole numbers and, and create these ratios that all have a hypotenuse less than 100. And altogether, there's only 32 of them. So we have this number 16 and 32 involved. Now, I just want to show you something that's interesting because we have this number 88. And does anybody know, because we we're talking about the wonderful number, and we know that it's in 813, 
Daniel 8.13 that Palmonize mentioned. And there's a thing called um, the Fibonacci sequence. And if you take 1 plus 1, that equals 2, and 1 plus 2 equals 3, and 2 plus 3 equals 5, and 3 plus 5 equals 8, and 5 plus 8 equals 13, and you can keep doing this sequence, the Fibonacci sequence, represented by the Greek letter phi. But Daniel 8.13 is in there, and Daniel 8.13, of course, the Palmoni, but to me as a musician, I see something there that maybe not everybody sees. How many notes are in an octave? Yeah, there's eight. There's actually seven, but the first note is repeated as an octave. Now, in a chromatic scale, there's actually, on a piano, there's 12 tones, but of course, a chromatic octave, if I started at C and played all the white keys and the black keys, when I got to C again, I would be on the 13th note. And so to me, I see this as a diatonic octave, it's called, and this is a chromatic octave. And what I also know about the number 88, how many keys are there on a piano? Anybody know? There's 88, right? And if I took this triangle and I multiplied it by 88, I would get something interesting. I would get this side, 88 times 3, would equal 264. So we have seen this number already. Now, if I multiply 5 by 88, I get 440. And 4 by 88, I get 352. Now, these numbers aren't necessarily symbols that we have. Uh, but I recognize them as a musician that this number here, and I knew it looked familiar when I first started thinking about it as a symbol, but then this number, as soon as I saw this number, because when I tune my guitar, I have a tuning fork that says A440. And I hit it on my knee, listen to it on my ear, do a harmonic on my string, fifth string, fifth fret, and then I can tune my guitar, and then I can tune all the strings from that string. Now this, this here, this is 440, just means 40 vibrations per second. So it actually be 440 hertz. 264 hertz is middle C. This is A, and this is F. And if I was going to play this on a piano, it would sound like this. So that's an F chord. But it's interesting that if I multiply it by 88, that I get this number. But I also get an F chord. And these ratios and these harmonies are another way that we can look at these time prophecies. Does God has uh, the music of the spheres that you know, they used to talk about, which the order of the planets and the ratios that exist in nature. And so what we see is that God has designed the universe in a way that it tells us something about Him. So I know it's a little bit of math. Um, I do want to show you another triangle. So when I, well, of course, that's a, a triangle that has all three sides are different. But we can also have a, a right triangle where two of the sides are the same. So if I have a right triangle like this, whatever these two sides are, they could be any sort of number, uh, still the square of the hypotenuse will be equal to the sum of the two sides of the triangle. And so I looked at some of the numbers that we, that we have there, and I skipped some here. I didn't want to go through all that. But I took the number 277, and 277 is one of the symbols... This is the 27th of July. That's the date that Josiah Litch starts in 449 BC. And, uh, and also in 1299. And so these two sides, if I make them 277, and then I square them, and I add them together, and, uh, and then I figure out what this side is, I just take the square root of that sum, and I get this number, 391. Now it has a decimal after it, it goes, goes on. Now the decimal that's after it is really interesting. I put it in the paper, but I don't want to deal with it. 
But here I have the number 391, which is connected to July 27. Now I did it with another uh, number as well. So I took the number 187, and I made one side 187, another side 187, and then this side ends up being 264 with a decimal after it. Now we have found lots of these things and how these numbers are related, and there is no mathematical relationship between these different types of systems, me using an octal or a hexadecimal, and me doing a triangle. These are completely different relationships, and yet these numbers still relate to each other. And you, it won't happen with other numbers. So it, it's, it's quite amazing what, what has happened with numbers. Now I know not everybody's a fan of math. Now I remember I, I came, uh, the first time I came to Arkansas was in 2014. Uh, I don't know how many, peop how many people remember me being here. Um, but uh, I ended up presenting on chronology. On, it was on October 20, 20th, I did one presentation, and then October 21st, I did two presentations. And I remember people walking out saying, this is a waste of our time. Um, one is I understand it a little bit. Nobody likes math class, um, unless you really like math. So. It was understandable, and also I tried to present everything that I had presented in Alberta that summer in nine presentations. I tried to present it in three, uh, so that was a bit of a mistake. So I've had to learn some things about that. Maybe I haven't learned as well as I could have based on this presentation. But I think that we are starting to understand these things, and that there isn't, even though these things are difficult, uh, you know, my wife is not good at math. She had to get a special math tutor. But she will notice things and recognize things when I'm going through and drawing these lines. And so, if she can understand it, everyone can understand it. Now, you know, another interesting fact, we're, we're, we know about Josiah Litch's prophecy you know, it starts here, 1299, it's 150 years, ends here in 1840, it's 391 years. And we know that when you add this together, you get 541 years. But when you take these numbers, 277 and 264, which is, this is the date in 1299 BC, that is July 27th, and on the biblical calendar is 264, and you add them together, you get this number. If this is not convicting and, and impresses you as far as the design that God has in this prophecy of Josiah Litch, then you're not, you're not looking hard enough because it's easily there on the surface. We know that God has designed this prophecy of Josiah Litch, and he's designed it in a way that we cannot mistake it as being truth unless we willingly reject it. Because I've showed this to people who are not Seventh-day Adventists, people who are not even Christians. And when I show them this, they believe it. They see it. They recognize it. And we have to be able to recognize it ourselves. And I believe that, it, it, that this is something, even though not all of us like math, but it's a message that we can give to the Levites that will be convicting to those who are seeking for truth. It will be something objective outside of themselves. It's not a story that we're telling where we, you know, we're pulling things together and, you know, well, I'm not sure about it's something that, it's sure, it's certain, it's objective fact. And I've done this, not just with these stories, with Josiah Litch, I've gone through, I usually start, when I'm starting with people, I'll start with uh, the story of Joseph and draw up a line. Or for Adventists, I will do uh, the story of, of 
Ezra leaving Babylon, going to Jerusalem, and draw out the line and show the chiasms. You know, and then I start to show them the chiasms in Millerite history. And there are some Adventists who see it and accept it. And there are some who just says it's coincidence. But when somebody says it's coincidence, with that kind of evidence, they've closed their minds and their hearts to truth. The one thing that, that has kept me as a Christian through the years, it goes way back to my childhood. I remember uh, reading my grandfather's library of his old religious books, all these old commentaries. And uh, my dad, who was also a minister, uh, he, you know, he had advanced from what my grandfather was. I noticed in my grandfather's books, my grandfather liked books on the sanctuary. Now, he wasn't an, an Adventist minister. Um, and and he, had, he liked really old religious books. Well, my dad liked the newer ones, right? When he went to seminary, it was all about the new ideas. And, but I could see this gradual progression of all these books in my home where first they undermine the story of, of the flood. And, and even just the plagues in Egypt, there's much, some natural explanation for the plagues in Egypt. You know, they're, they're trying to, to win the worldly person. And when this new movement started going in that direction, I have to apologize, I actually started going in that direction too. And I, and I said to myself, maybe my dad was right. You know, and it was, it was a difficult thing. There's a lot of reasons that I could be pulled in that direction. But it was these numbers that pulled me out of it. And it was when Elder Jeff got up on Sabbath, on September 7th, and I counted 63 days to November 9th. And I was at my church in Warburg, Alberta, sitting there. And I had been here noon, 47 weeks before. And I was now here at noon again, doing this calculation in church. And I realized something. I realized that this was part of a structure. And this structure was the structure that I was involved in, pointing to July 18th and further. But in the center of this structure, there's 164.5 days, because we're going from noon to noon, we can be really specific. But the center date in here is the thing that struck me the most. Because I'd seen all these connections with 273 and this prediction and these numbers. But this date here is March 27th. And March 27th, 27th day of the third month, that's 273. And so, when Elder Jeff got up and spoke and fulfilled prophecy, I recognized it right away, but I still had to struggle. I had to sort through everything that had happened and try to make sense out of it. And I had been defending the new movement for quite a while, and it took me still about two days, maybe two and a half days to be precise, before I realized that I was on the wrong side. And uh, so I apologize to everyone. So uh, do we close in prayer for this? No. No. no, you don't? Okay. So thank you everyone for listening. And uh, hope you have a good Sabbath. Dear Father in heaven, we are thankful for your presence on this Sabbath day. And we ask, Lord, that you can be with us as we study together. And um, we pray, Lord, that uh, the light that comes from your throne will shine upon us. And that comes from your word. Help us, Lord, to understand. May your Holy Spirit be our teacher 
and be our guide. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good afternoon. You know, and I'm always used to apologizing every time I speak, which probably isn't really a good habit to get into, but it is a complicated topic. And I'm going to try to make it as simple as I can, as I always do, um, but I do believe we need the Holy Spirit uh, to be here to help us. And, you know, one of the things that I've noticed in all the conversations that I've had with people over these topics is that there are people who are willing to do the work and those people are going to receive a blessing. And there are other people who want somebody to do the work for them and they're not going to receive the blessing. And my, my plea to people is that you take the time to understand it in whatever way that you can, but you have to make the effort. And um, there's many blessings in the study of chronology. It's the backbone of prophecy. And I never expected that we would be using chronology in this way. You know, I remember Elder Jeff back in 2014 um, when I had presented a whole bunch of chronology up in Alberta camp meeting. He, uh, he asked me if I was projecting any dates into the future. I don't know if he was trying to test me to see if I was a time setter or something like that, but I don't know if you remember. But he asked me that question, and I, I'm not a time setter. You know, I've always been opposed to time setting, so I never expected to be there on October 13th doing a calculation about something into the future and then having a conviction that God was leading. And I still have that conviction. It's stronger and stronger as time goes on. And I haven't tried to, well, I shouldn't say I haven't tried, I have tried to rationalize it. But to some degree, I think that we have to accept this on faith. It's like a test of faith. And there's been points in my life where God has spoken to me and told me to do things that didn't really make sense. But I knew his voice. And so I did what he told me to do. And one of the things about God's voice, and I've given this counsel to other people, is that God never really has to speak to you when you want to do something. When you want to do something and you're going to do it, God doesn't have to intervene and tell you, no, go ahead and do that. But whenever God has spoken to me, I've always recognized that it went against self and that God had to speak to me. So, I'm, you know, I'm asking those who are watching to take the time to think about these things and to study them to see whether they're so or not. Now, the, the paper, the notes that we have for this uh, addresses the Mayan calendar. And I'm not sure how much detail I'm going to go into. Uh, we'll see. Um, but I just want to deal with some coincidences of why I use the Mayan calendar. And what happened uh, last November, I was uh, doing uh, the sermon at uh, Lambert Church, and I did it on the topic of Ezekiel's Wheels Within Wheels. And I read a, a book, or a booklet, uh, that I found online um, by a guy named... Uh, Somewhere I have it in here. Can't think of his name. His last name's Herman, Kenneth Herman. And this book was dealing with calendars, and he had some really interesting ideas. And so I was reading through this, uh, you know, just trying to understand the calendars a little bit better. And he had made this statement that the, the Mayan calendar began on August 11th, 3113 BC. So that, that was a really interesting point. So, of course, we know this is an important date, August 11th, 3113 BC. Now, he said this was a Gregorian date. And, or no, he said it was a Julian date. And so I, I looked up the Julian date, and I found that it was the 26th day of the fourth month on the biblical calendar. So I thought, well, that, that's very interesting. 
that uh, this date, which is a symbol, matches this symbol. And so this was a Julian date over here. Now, he made an assumption, because uh, this was written quite a long time ago, back in the 70s, and he just made an assumption that when somebody, when he read in a book that it was August 11th, 3113 BC, there would be a Julian date, because normally you're going to use a Julian date. But he was wrong. It wasn't a Julian date. It was actually the Gregorian date. And so I realized that, and so then I looked up uh, the Gregorian date of August 11th. Now, it was written like this, or it should be written like this, if it's a Gregorian date. Because this would actually be 3114 BC, because when you use Gregorian dates BC, you add the zero year. So it's in a different year than this one is. We would, this would actually be September 6th, 3114 BC. Um, but when I looked up that date, it was the 10th day of the fifth month. So these are the two main symbols that we used for July 18th. This one comes from Ezekiel, and this one comes from Josiah Litch. And that they both lined up with these August 11th was pretty amazing to me. Very unlikely. Now, of course, this is the wrong date, but the thing is this date still exists as a symbol. And the fact that I could do that was remarkable. Um, I also continue to go through and look at, at the, the beginning years of this calendar and look at how the different dates lined up. And uh, it, it was some quintillion to one odds that those dates would align in the way that they did. It was very, very remarkable. But I also looked at the end of this calendar. Now, the beginning of this calendar, when you, when you look at this, uh, if I was going to put this on the Mayan calendar, it would just be this one here, would be the zero, 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 zero. That would be the date on the Mayan calendar. And it's just a day count calendar. They count the days. And I have it in the booklet and how they do that. I don't want to go through that in detail here. But this would be zero year. And some people heard that on December 20th, 2012, the world was going to come to an end because the Mayan calendar was going to come to an end and it was going to reset to zero. But that actually wasn't true. The Mayan calendar in the year 2012, on December 21st, was going to be this date. Because this goes up to 20. Well, actually, when it gets to 20, it goes back to zero. So it never gets to 20, this, this date. Now, when it moves, when this digit here moves from one, from zero to one, the period of time that's covered is 144,000 days. So that was a very interesting aspect of the Mayan calendar. It had this, this cycle called a, a, a baktun. So this is, when it goes from zero to this one, that would be one baktun has, has passed by, 144,000 days. So you can see it's a, it's a very long count calendar. Now this calendar will end when it gets back to zero again, it's going to be um, 4772 AD, so it's way in the future. Um, but the date is October 13th, which was interesting to me because this was just after October 13th that I found this out. But the other aspect of this is that this date that it ends on the biblical calendar is the 10th day of the seventh month. So the question is, why can't I use these calendars? Well, the Mayan calendar is a day count calendar. It has these symbols that speak about Islam, and it's an American calendar. It's a Mesoamerican calendar. And when I did some research on it, the Mayan calendar is not unique in the Americas. That is, in the Americas, 
there was these day count calendars. Now it's the one that we have the best records of and we know exactly how it worked. Some of these other calendars we don't, but we know that they did have these day count calendars. And we have, we have a calendar that comes from pagan Rome. We have a calendar that comes from papal Rome. We have a biblical calendar. We have an Islamic calendar. But we also now have an American calendar in, in this chronology. And it just gives us some information. And I'm going to look at what we understand already about the prediction and um, try to fit this in on this board. So we know a lot of things. And I'm going to go, I'm not going to go all the way back to 1299, or 1299 July 27th. I'm going to go here to 1449. And this is July 27th. So I'm going to put my Gregorian dates up here and my Julian dates down here. So this is July 18th, Julian. If it's the 26th day of the fourth month on the biblical calendar, in 1449, it'll be July 27th on the Gregorian calendar. And it'll be July 18th on the Julian calendar. And, you know, we know these, these symbols. Obviously, this is where we're going to for the end of this calendar. Um... Now we have, of course, a hundred, um, you know, the 150 years that go before here, and there's 391 years in here, um, but they're divided in all these different ways, and you've seen this where you got 360 years, 30 years, one year, and then you're going to have 15 days uh, that Josiah Litch used to come to August 11th, 1840, right? And 15 days. We can understand that as a 0.5, because that's 0.5 of a month. So I know I'm doing a little bit of review here. But the interesting thing is when we get to this date, July 27th, Gregorian, in 1840, and we look at this date here on the, the Julian, you would just take 12 days off. So that would be July 15th. This would still be the 26th day of the fourth month. Now, I said I'm going to talk about the Mayan calendar, and I will in a minute, but I also want to look at the Islamic calendar. Now, this date on the Islamic calendar is 27-5-853 in the year of the Hijra. So this is how they count the calendar from... Their calendar starts at sunset on July 18th, 622. That's when the Islamic calendar starts. So it also, we have a July 18th there, just with the Islamic calendar. And, and we come over here, and we're going to look at the date. It'll be the same Islamic date, the 27th day of the fifth month, but it's going to be in the year 1256. Now we know, on this calendar, how many years have passed So 391 years. But if I look on this Islamic calendar and I take this number and I subtract this number, I will see that the number of years that passed, and I think I did that wrong, this number, is that right? I'll take three. Oh yeah, this is correct. 403. So it's 403 years difference. So on our calendar, this is a solar calendar, right? The Gregorian calendar is a solar calendar. But the Islamic calendar is not. It's a lunar calendar. And so this calendar here deals with years that are solar. The Islamic calendar is a calendar that's based on months. And that is they count 12 months to every year, but they ignore the sun. They ignore the seasons. So, how long is a year on our calendar? 365, you know, and a little bit more. On their calendar, their year is 300, 
in 54 and a little bit. There's about 11 days difference between this. And so every time we go through a year, the Islamic calendar has gone through a year and 11 days. And so they get behind every year. And so it takes 391 of our months to go through a cycle that's 403 of their months. So their months are shorter than ours. This period is 11,900 days, which on our calendar would be 391 months. It's 11,900 days, but on their calendar it would be 403 months. So that means that their month is 29.53 days, roughly, and our month is 30.44 days on average, because we have some months that are 11, or, or 31, and some are 30, and we have February that's 28 and 29. So I know this starts to get a little bit confusing. We look at this. We got all these numbers, and we have days and months, and we can count things in years. But one of the things I want you to notice here is this number, 391 months, lines up on our calendar with 403 Islamic months, while 391 years on our calendar lines up with 403 Islamic years. And that's because both of them are using, we're dividing this period of time into 12 months. So if we're going to look at this period of time of 391 years, how many cycles of 391 months would you need to fit into 391 years? I know I'm asking you to do some math. But, but you have a cycle of 391 months, and you want to find out how many of those cycles fit up into 391 years. You would multiply it by 12, right? Because there's 12 months in a year. Because if you wanted one month to fit into one year, you would just you would say there's 12 months in that one year. So we do the same thing. So we take 391 months and we multiply it by 12 and we get 391 years. So that should be kind of obvious to people. It's actually quite simple math. So in this period of time that we have here, there's actually 12 cycles where the Islamic calendar comes around and meets our calendar. So it does it 12 times. Now, I could also represent this as uh, 32 years and 7 months. And theirs covers 33 years and 7 months. And you can see that in the time that we go through 32 years and 7 months, they actually do a whole extra year. So that's another way of looking at it. So we divide this up into all these divisions. Yeah, so we got 12 of these divisions. And every one of these divisions is either 391 months. But if we call it 11,900 days, we would see that that's the same amount of time that the Islamic calendar covers 30, 33 years and 7 months. So their days are the same as, as ours. And this period of time is actually even more specific because it would be 11,900 days and 20 hours for the calendars to actually line up every 32 years and 7 months on our calendar. Now this happens 12 times. Now this cycle is a natural cycle. Because what you have is you have a lunar cycle lining up with a solar cycle. And it's called the cycle of the ecliptic. 391 years is a natural cycle that God has created. And it's represented in Bible prophecy as a day and a month and a year in prophetic time. And it's very, very precise. It's only a few minutes off. So the fact that God has used these symbols, a day, a month, and a year, 
to actually represent a period, a natural cycle, is extremely remarkable. And I'm not sure how, we, how much we appreciate how remarkable it is. Yes, I'm going to deal with the hour, right? So in this, in this here, we don't, we don't have a calendar that has an hour, right? But if we use the mind calendar, the mind calendar is a day count calendar. So it's counting days. And the hour in prophetic time relates to what? Days, right? So we have all these different calendars. We have a solar calendar. We have a lunar calendar. We have a solar lunar calendar, which is the biblical calendar. And then we have the mind calendar that's a day count calendar. So all of those symbols that are used in Revelation chapter 9 are, are then can be utilized to make this prediction. So when we made this prediction of July 18th, 2020, it was actually Stephen who suggested that we take, instead of 0.5 of a month, we take 0.5 of a year and we put it into the future in prophetic time. So he, he was just going to take this period of 180 years, which is prophetically half of a year. So it's a day for a year. And he projected it into the future from 1840 180 years would bring you to 2020. Now, we had already found this date as July um, 30, 31, 31st of July in 2020, which was a Julian date, July 18th. And we had done that using Ezekiel's prophecy. But now we knew that we were to use Josiah Lich's prophecy because Ezekiel was using the prophecy of Josiah. And so then we... When we had done that original date, I'm going to put up here July 31st, but we actually had July 18 Julian, and that was the 10th day of the 5th month. So that symbol that I showed you in the Mayan calendar was the first date that we had for July 18th. But when we, when we did 180 years, and I looked at this symbol, the 26th day of the 4th month, the 26th day of the 4th month ended up being on the Gregorian calendar, July 18th. And so this became our main date that we looked at because it's, a, it's the date on our calendar. But we did have this 13 days in between July 18th and July 31st. One is a symbol of a strike by Islam. The other one is a symbol of the destruction of Jerusalem. And so we could relate this uh, to what was going to happen within Adventism in some way. So we've, we've done a lot of other things, obviously. What's that? Are those two different waymarks? Well, they're both July 18th. One's Julian, one's Gregorian. So they are two different waymarks, but they're part of the same waymark. Because there's something that's going to happen here. At least that's the way we originally understood it. And... This one is certain of the elders of Israel come and sit before Ezekiel to inquire of the Lord. And so our initial idea is that when this prophecy is fulfilled, there's a response. And the message that Ezekiel gives to the elders of Israel who come and sit before him to inquire of the Lord is that Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. That's the message he gives in Ezekiel 20 all the way to the end of chapter 23. And then chapter 24 starts with the siege. First verse is the date of the siege. So, you know, I'm not sure if I fully understand all the things that are going to happen here, but I do know that these two dates come from Josiah Litch and Ezekiel, and they're tied together in some way. And so both of these symbols, the 10th day of the 5th month, we haven't focused on as much recently as we have on this one, but they both come into play. So I'm going to get rid of this part of this. Uh, I'm going to write it back up, but in a little more condensed form. I would seem to suggest that Islam comes before the Sunday law. Yes. There's no doubt about that. It comes before the Sunday law. 
so now I want to look back at our at our. Law, that's the Sunday law. I mean, the Sunday law that marks the beginning of the image of the beast. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we're we're going to look at uh, our line of what happened, remember we had June 9th, That's 9:11 p.m. sunset. We had six days, um, and then we had uh, June 15th, and then we had 126 days. And that came to October 13th. So I'm not going to go through and explain all this. This is 2018. 120 days, yes, pardon me. 120. And this is 126 days. And this 126 days, um, we ended up, it was predicted on July 27th. So we had a symbol of Islam, the start of Josiah Lich's prophecy. And the center of this, so I'm going to get rid of this now. The center of this was August 11th, and there was these periods of 63 days. That showed that there was this structure that we could then relate to Samuel Snow's letter. So there's a whole bunch of work that's been done, which is on the other board, uh, some of it. Now, when we deal with this history, we're, we're going to look at this in a bit more detail than we have before. So we have November 9th here, and we know this is 391.5 days. And we already looked earlier that there was 63 days here. And we had March 27th marked in the center of a chiasm between September 7th and October 13th. And that's a symbol of 273. So we've had this symbol of, of the Levites. And we have these dates here, which are also part of a structure. 252 days here, and we have 525 days here. And this brings us to December 25th, 2021. So this is 2020 here. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to just get rid of some of this stuff. Because I'm going to have to put more, more material in there. And we had this divided with 252 days, and then we had March 27th, which again is a symbol, this is 2021, and this is a symbol of 273, and it's followed by 273 days, right? So this symbol predicts the period of time that's going to lead to December 25th, 2021. And so this is the structure that we have. Now, in looking at this structure, one of the things that you know, I mentioned this morning is that we have these symbols tied together. We know that in Acts chapter 12, we have the 273 that are subtracted from the 276 because Paul, Aristarchus, and Luke are not counted as the Levites. And so these are the number of the Levites. And we also get it from Numbers Chapter 3, verse 26. So, you know, this is review, and it's all been done on video. But the thing that I like to focus on is the connection here where they measure the fathoms, and they find that it's 2520 inches. And the fact that we have 273 connected with 252 in the story of Acts chapter 27, to me, is extremely significant. Another part of the story is if you go to Numbers chapter 3 and you get the number 273, the difference between the Levites and the, the firstborn number of the firstborn of the tribe of Israel, you have this difference. There's this redemption money. And this brings us back to Daniel chapter 5. So we, we start to have all these stories interconnected. All of the, the different prophecies that we've had that we used to lay line upon line they now all start to weave into each other. And, you know, and I, I use the idea of as a tapestry, but even a wheel within a wheel is a very good description of what we see happening with these prophecies. There's all these multiple connections. And in Numbers chapter 3, let's turn there.
there's, there's a few things that we sort of miss, or we have missed, in studying this. In Numbers 3, we start with this, the counting of, um, in chapter 14, they're going to count the number of the children of Levi. Uh, chapter, uh, verse 14, so Numbers 3, verse 14. And so they count the number of, of Levi, and what they're wanting to find out is the firstborn um, of, of the tribe, uh, of all the tribes, they do that, and then they do, the, they do all of the children of Levi. So what you have is you have the firstborn of all Israel, and then you have, which is one month old and upward, and then you have all the, the children of of Levi. And of course you have 12 tribes against one tribe. Because how many tribes are there? There's 13 tribes. Right? Because Joseph got two. Manasseh and Ephraim. So there's actually 13 tribes. And so now God is taking the Levites and he's using them to replace the firstborn. So they're going to be the ones serving in the sanctuary. Where the firstborn would usually have uh, these, these blessings having to do with the priesthood, the kingship, and the double portion, and those have been distributed uh, in the blessing of Jacob amongst uh, the children. So the Levites are going to be the ones ministering in the sanctuary, not the firstborn of all the families of Israel. And when you count this number of the Levites, they go through Gershon and Merari and uh, Kohath, they go through them, and you add them up, do you know what number you come, come to? 22,000... Anybody know what number? 300. Now, later on, it says that there's 22,000 of the children of Levi. But when you actually look at the count and add it up, it says 22,300. Uh, has anybody noticed that before? Okay, if you read the commentaries, they all say it's a typo. And what's my basic rule when I'm studying the Bible? Any contradiction is a problem with me, not with God's Word. There's some, something that I need to learn from that. So what does that number 300 remind you of? Gideon, right? Now, there's no explanation in the text of why when they do the math and they take all, the, all of the children of of um because these are the children of the first the all the children of the levites but when they take just the firstborn of of the children of israel is 22,273 but they don't they don't include this they just take that 3 out of there and they make this a zero when they do their math so when they, when they do their math, you get this 273. And so I wondered about that. I mean, obviously, I know there's a symbol there. There's a symbol there in the number of the Levites. And so there's some speculation, right? And uh, some good speculation by the ancient rabbis of what that would mean. Um, but I would say that it was people who were not qualified to be counted in this, in this way for whatever reason. So there could be lots of different reasons. But the point is, the number that's going to be, that has to be made up, is the number 273. So we've done the math on this, and you... You're saying 22,273 is Levi, and the 22,000 is all the rest of Israel? Yeah, this is the firstborn of the children of Israel. Or no, pardon me, this is the firstborn of the children of Israel, and this is the Levites. This is, this is all of the Levites' children, right? All the males. But the Levites have this discrepancy. Right, because they had 300. Actual. Actual, but the number they use for here is 22,000, not 22,300. So why that is, we don't know, but I think it's important. And it's important to note um, when discrepancies happen, because there might be some light that comes from that. So I don't like to just ignore them. So we did the math, math on this, So, and the Bible does it for us, but there's five shekels paid for each of the children of 
that they have to redeem the, the difference between these children. And when you do that, you get this number, 1,365. Right, and so this number doesn't really look like anything that we recognize. But how many tribes are there again? So if you take this number and you divide it by 13, you get this number. And what's that number? It's the 10th day of the fifth month. But if you subtract the 10th day of the fifth month from this number, so if you subtract 105, that is you take one of the tribes out of those 13, and you subtract it, you get this number, 1260. So in this story, in Numbers thir 3, we get the number 273, the number of the Levites. We also get half a 2520, which is really a 2520, right? 126 is a 2520. And we also get this other symbol, the 10th day of the fifth month. So, God is telling us something by these numbers. Now, I'm, I'm not going to possibly get through the whole study that I want to do. And not in the way that I want to do it. So, it's in the paper. Um, but I'm going to just give you a really... I'm going to give you the conclusion. One is I want you to stay awake. And there's a lot of math involved in that. So, I want to go back to this 391 years from 1449 to 1840. And remember, we, we had that number of days. That number of days was how many days? That period of time, there's 12 of them. The number of days was this, right? And so it's 11,900 days and 20 hours. And we can see a symbol here, right, 11,9 that's in that number of days. So this is where I'm going to bring in the Mayan calendar. I'm not going to try to do too much math uh, in this. Now if you take that period of days and you, whoops, I shouldn't have erased that, and you go here at 1299 or 1499, 1449, and 1840, in this period of 391 years, you would just multiply this by 12 and you would know how many days there are. And the number of days is 142,810 days. So it's a lot of days. But when you think about the Mayan calendar, so this is July 27th, the Mayan calendar had a count of how many days? Yeah, yes, Steve, Stephen? I uh, put them the dates. July 27th, 1449. Yeah. And July 27th, 1840. And to a date, just counted uh, into an online date calculator. Yeah. And it came, came to 142801. Yeah, except that you, uh, you had the wrong date here because this is a Gregorian date. You have to go to July 18th. Okay. And then you will get that nine days. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you too because somebody else might have done that. So, when we go to the Mayan calendar, we had a count of 144,000 days. So, I looked at the difference between 144,000 days and 142,810 days. Now, remember, there was 12 cycles of 11,900 days. But when I do this math, the difference between these two is 1,190 days. It's exactly one-tenth of this period of time. So that told me again this was not something that was random. That there's a design there. Because that's not something you would expect to find. It's very unlikely that you're just going to get that to happen. So I'm not going to do all the math for you on this one. That's, that's, that's it. All I'm going to tell you is that I did something. I used the Mayan calendar, and I used it in two different ways. I went from uh, that, that period where we end, just end here, on July 27th, 1840. And I took that period of time, and I did some math with it. And I'm not going to even write the math down. It's, it's in, the, in the booklet. 
But that math gave me two different numbers. I used the Mayan calendar, and I did some math, and I got this number, 66,000 days. And I used a mixture of the Mayan, or well, it's not really a Mayan, but the date that I got from the Mayan, um, the number I got from the Mayan, and I, and I got this number of days. So I had, a, pardon me, not 66,000, 66. Yeah, 66,000, that's right. So these are the number of days, and I decided to count the number of days from here to see if I would get close to July 18th, or maybe even hit it. You know, that was kind of the, the hope that I would, they would actually, one of these numbers would land on July 18th. So again, I'm cutting this short as far as the math is concerned. But what I was doing is I was using a different type of 0.5. So when we, when Josiah Litch did it, and he went from July 27th, he counted 0.5 what? A month, 15 days, that's half a month. And then we did it where we did a half of a year. What I did is I did a 0.5, which, you know, it seems kind of like an odd thing to do, but we had all these different periods of divisions of this history here, 12 of them, and what I did is I took the number 5 as a symbol. So I wasn't really using a 0.5, I wasn't using a half, but I was using five of those symbols and I was multiplying them. I was also using the difference between the Mayan calendar of the, the back tune of 144,000 days, that difference, and I took five of those as well and I added them together. And that's how I got this number. And then I did the same thing with just the back tune itself and I took five of those cycles, I divided it into 12 and took five of those cycles, and then I took uh, five of these again and I added them together, or it's not actually these, but five of that fraction, and I got this number. So I had two different day counts that I could use to count from July 27th. So you see we've used, we've used all of the symbols right, that God has given us to figure this out. Now, now, these are obviously two different numbers. They're not going to come to the same date. They're, but they're going to come somewhere. And this date here, July 18th, 20, is, um, if I remember correctly, uh, 65,000... I can't remember the number that it is. It's 65, 375 or something like that. Maybe 65,375. So you can see this number is really close. So if I'm counting from July 27th, and I'm going to count over here to July 18th, this one is going to bring me to July 18th. This one's going to bring me... So this can't be right, because this one's supposed to bring me shorter. So this must be 66,000. I don't know. Do you know what the number is, Stephen? It's on, it's, well, it should be on the chart. Let me see what it says on the chart. So you have a diagram at the back. And it should say this number. It doesn't. So I can't remember the number. And I lost the lid. So, <clears throat> anyway, whatever this number is, I can't remember it. So I know it's... I could probably figure it out if I just took the time to think about it. But I don't have the time because I'm trying to get this done. But what I did is I took this, these dates, and this one, when I counted it, it went past July 18th. And the date that it went to is April 9th, 2021. So if I go over here, it's going to bring me to April 19th, 2020. 2021. So, so April 19th, or April 9th, pardon me, 
April 9th, 2021. So that goes past July 18th, right? That's the 66,000. That's just using the mind calendar, using the number, the 0.5 as a symbol to multiply. And then I use this other number, 60, 65,464 is what it is. Um, should be, it's, I think it's 54. Yeah, you got both on there, so I was, you can assume it well, it could be either one. Yeah, I think I did a typo on the chart itself. Anyway, when I counted this, and, and I've done this properly, don't worry about that part, because um, I go over my math quite carefully. But you can... <laughs> Okay, what I'm doing is I'm taking the Mayan calendar and I'm doing, I'm doing day counts. So instead of doing months and years, I'm now doing days. And I'm using the Mayan calendar to do that. So that's, that's basically what I just you know, told you, but that's simpler. And I came up to these different numbers. And one brought me to April 9th, 2021. And the other one brought me uh, to October 11th, 2019. Now this one may seem a little odd, but when I figured this out, I figured this out on October 10th. So on October 10th, I said, I have a count that goes to October 11th that has something to do with Islam. And the headline in the New York Times says, ISIS rears its head. That was, whether it wasn't really a major event, but the language sounded like a major event. And so to me, it indicated that maybe I was on the right track. But it's not even really about what happens on these dates. What I found when I looked at this is that there was a center date between this date and this date. And that center date is July 10th, eight days before July 18th. And what is July 10th? Okay, you're not supposed to answer. Okay, it's the 10th day of the 7th month, isn't it? Right? That's what it is. So this is a symbol, 10th day, the 7th month. You can't give me answers because you don't know his questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, now this is interesting. This is the center of this. And the center of this, this period of time, the difference between these two, it, it's not in proportion, so you can't tell that it's the center. But from here to here is 273 days. And from here to here, then, would also be 273 days. So these are 273s. Two 273s are produced by taking the day count calendar and using it, the five as a symbol instead of a point five and multiplying it. And so then I end up getting these two dates. Now this date is also interesting because you know what the Julian date is here? March 27th. Yes, Stephen didn't. He does know. But March 27th. So we have that symbol of March 27th also used here. So you see the impossibility? Like, and that I could not produce this. Even if I had a, you know, a computer brain, I wouldn't be able to manufacture this type of coincidence. Because these calendars and these, these dates and these numbers already exist in a structure that we've already established. Now, I don't know what all these dates mean as far as they're, they're part of a structure and they definitely have symbolic import, but I can see that this 273 is produced by using these numbers in the line that we already have. In the, and to me, this would be a confirmation that we can't separate the July 18, 2020, or 2020 prediction 
from the message that we received regarding Acts 27 and Numbers 3. These two things are interchangeably, inter they're, they're just locked together. What was the date that you were raised off that follows July 18th, 2020? Well, that was just July 13th, or July 31st, 2020, and that was 13 days, right? So you got, you got July 18th, Julian, right, down here. It'd be July 31st, Gregorian. So you got this 8 and this 13 connected. And July 31st is the 10th day of the 5th month? How do, yes? No? Yes. It, yeah, it's the 10th day of the 5th month. It's the destruction right. of the temple. Right. It's the 10th day of the 5th month. Okay, because I, I had a problem with what you're saying, but now I get it. I don't have a problem anymore. Okay. Because the, the Mayan date is identifying the Sunday law, and then Islam responds. Yeah. But if it was July 18th, then Islam would be ahead. It, the, the judgment doesn't come before right. the Sunday law. Yes. Yeah. No, it, 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 it just all fits. Now, it's interesting that this date here, this April 9th date, on the Mayan calendar is... Uh, you know, they have these five digits. But the last three are 777. So, there's... That's there's, on the April 9th. That's on the April 9th. This one that has this symbol, which is 49. It has the 273 symbol on a Julian date, because this is the Gregorian date. But on the Mayan date... That's the date. Right? And there's more to it, right? So, you know, I've given you a bit of it, you know, because I, I didn't want to, you know, one is I have, I have a time limit. And, and you can take the time to go through the paper and look at the math. And so the math is very sound. Now, there's just one other thing. When I was looking at this date back here, the Mayan calendar, the, that that uh, period of time that the Mayan calendar was longer than 391 years, because it's 144,000 days compared to 142. So 142,810 days ends here, and the Mayan calendar is going to go beyond it. And it's going to go to this date, October 30th, 1843. So that's where it goes. That's 11,000 or 1,190 days from July 27th. That's how much that back tune goes from 1449, it goes past it. And I looked at this date, this number, and I read it backwards, and I, I, I did it instead of as this. And when I did that, and I counted this from here, because it's a shorter number, I actually came to the date July 18th, 2020. So by just inverting this number, which we've already done, we've already inverted numbers, when I did that, I actually came to the date that I originally thought I might find by using the Mayan calendar. But I had to invert this number, this part of this number, to do that. And it was just, I just looked at it and read it wrong, and then I put it in the computer wrong, in the program wrong, and it gave me July 18th. And then, I, and then I realized I actually had it. My dyslexia with numbers, I do actually have a dyslexia with numbers. I yes? I remember inverting a, a series of numbers as part of the study, but, but not which one. numbers did we invert in the 252 and 525? Yeah. Yeah, right. so we did, we did that with those. And we're doing that actually in this structure here, 252 and 525. Five. So, That's the one we're talking about. yeah, so we, we've already done that here. So now I'm doing it, of course, just partially. You know, then those are easy ones to confuse, you know, flip the fours and the fives around when you're writing it out, at least for me. Because um, I've actually done this a number of times. I've got the numbers backwards, and it actually produced something. You didn't invert those. Aren't that the count of days between those? Right. But that's not us inverting well, them. No, we inverted it. We inverted purposely. it. Purposely. Well, in, in a sense. Accidentally, but now he's going to do it purposely. 
Well, I did it accidentally too. <laughs> That's what I mean. But, but from yeah, now on, you're going to do it purposely. Yeah, yeah. But you know, the thing is, we have that that symbol. This is the 777 days, right? This inversion, and that's what. We're right. There's our 777 July 18th days. With? What's that? No, that's what they're they're reaching the 25th of December. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we get over here, you know, we get to the biblical, the 20th day of the ninth month. And and there's probably still more that we're going to notice as we go through, as we start to pass through this history, as we start to to study this more and more minds are involved, that we're going to notice things. But I think what this does is it gives us an indication that as we're approaching July 18th, and I would say that when we're here on July 10th, the 10th day of the seventh month, on our calendar, so this is actually a Gregorian date, not a Julian, right? so it should be up here, July 10th, eight days before July 18th, I think we're going to be we're going to know a lot about what's happening in eight days, and we're obviously going to be warning people. That would be my guess based upon this chronology. Right? It's 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 telling us that we're we're still progressing through this, and as we progress through this, we're going to understand more and more. We're not going to be just waiting for July 18th, so to speak. One is we have work to do. But also as we approach it, um, and there are some other things in here too I haven't included. So, um, you know, and I haven't really dealt with those March 27th. There's a whole bunch of stuff dealing with those. So these two dates here, right? We have a March 27th in 2019, and we have a March 27th in 2021. How many days, it's two years apart, how many days is that? There's 365 days in a year, and if you added it together, it'd be 730, right? But there's a leap year in here, so it's 731. Now, 731 could represent what? 31st of July? Yeah, the 31st of July, which is our other date, right? This is, you know, July... 31, but we could call it the 31st of July. So it, you know, so that would be 731 as well. So even just that span of time between these two March 27th ties into one of the dates that we have. So the, the only way we got to December 25, 2021 was just a random inversion of the 252? No. The way that Steve, Stephen did it initially yeah. is he was dealing with uh, it's rather complicated, but he was dealing with the beginning in 1989 yeah, and 1991. That's why I remember that presentation. Right. Yeah. So then he got to the, and then then he did the analysis afterwards. Right, right, Stephen. That's how you did it. Yeah. It's right. Uh, so then then we looked at it and we saw these structures, and we saw, you know, obviously we we had already figured out the 252 from here to here. So then to get the 252 here, and to get March 27th, and to see that it's 273. And that, you know, this all fits in. I mean, you couldn't make it up. It, it has to be there. And, it, and it's not something that's going to happen randomly. There isn't a lot of, uh, you know, like looking at the statistical probabilities, there's way beyond anything that I can even calculate. You know, to just all of these impossible uh, relationships. And that's why I say it's like it's this woven tapestry or like wheels within wheels. It's something that looks complex, but as we examine it, we see that there's perfect order. And, and that's what I want people to do, is I want them to study this, and before you reject it, to see the order. And we're all going to see it on different levels, right? But we should be able to see the order. We should be able to see that, and, and maybe right now it just looks more confusing when I do it, compared to when Odilio and Stephen do it. Okay, so let's, uh, if, if there's no final questions, we can close in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, uh, we thank you um, for this afternoon, and we pray for all the people who have been watching uh, this presentation. 
who, who will watch it. Uh, we ask, Lord, that um, you, your Holy Spirit can bring a conviction and also that you can enlighten our minds. Help us, Lord, to stretch um, our energies beyond what we have in the past, to trust in you, to know you as our friend, that you are not bringing these things as some arbitrary judgment against us or a punishment, but that you want us to understand your amazing power and your amazing ability to work in our lives and to work in history and that we can be a part of that. So we give our hearts to you, Lord, and we ask that you can be with us throughout the rest of this Sabbath. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.